People ask me all the time, what do those letters stand for? Well, MAD, as this one stands for, obviously means MURDER HOBO ACTION VEHICLE. It no. Nope. What? Is that what it stands da for? Doesn't? No. Momentum. Ah. Hey everybody. Josh RV Nerd here with Bish's RV, getting my first look at, uh, you know, I saw the prototype of this. If you actually go way back through my 2023 uh, footage, like preview footage for Grand Design, you saw the very first MAV prototype. And it wasn't anywhere close to this thing. They doubled down. What they put out, I thought was fine. This is a next level above, and they're creating like another level of in-betweener right here. So um, even though it says like Momentum Adventure Vehicle, MAV, this is actually basically a member of the Transcend series, but all the toy haulers at Grand Design are, you know, of the Momentum family, so they kind of join the names. But what they did here is they sort of meshed like a Momentum uh, G-Class travel trailer with a Transcend travel trailer and came up with something pretty cool and I really love what they're doing in the cargo area. So a couple of the more outstanding qualities on this. With their Radiant Barrier package, they have a very comfortable extended season rating on these. They have some really nice holding tank capacities as well. They did not skimp out there. Uh, up on the roof, we've got a 165 watt, yeah, serviceable factory solar package. But what's interesting on these, these are 101 inch wide. Usually when you get into this class, you run into a lot of crossovers, which are a standard eight foot body that's only six and a half foot tall inside. This is a 101 inch wide body, just like Big Brother Full Momentum, but it's also 84 inches tall inside. It's seven foot to the ceiling. Most of the builders in a, in a class like this are six and a half, maybe six nine if you're lucky. This thing can fit. A, uh, I, I saw them load a 2021 side by side, and the 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 engineer for this plant, he's like six foot seven, 300 pounds. He's a monster, and he was able to park a four uh, seat side by side in this and still walk out. So it is a very functional floor plan. They did a very good job making sure your loading space is going to be ultimately functional. And uh, like a true queen bed, the headboard power pockets, the really tall shower, the the, the way that they, they did the bed lift in the garage area. I like this thing. I think this is gonna turn some heads, not to mention the fact, boy, she's got the look. Now, it definitely bears mentioning, it's a no-slide model, which means, you know, less nonsense, less upkeep. That also means less weight. And this thing has, like, over 4,100 pounds of available cargo carrying capacity. That is awesome right there. And I realized uh, we're about to give this thing a colonoscopy. We're sticking a camera right up the backside of it. <laughs> which was a phrase I wasn't necessarily intending to start today's video with. But uh, basically from the, uh, the, the backside looking in, here's what we're looking at. But one of the key details here, because it is flirting a little bit more with being a, I, I think it almost qualifies, it really does qualify as a true toy hauler versus a crossover, I think. You do still have the uh, dovetail or some people call beaver tail rear end uh, back there. So if, uh, cause the RV sits high enough. If you're loading something like a Harley or Goldwing, you know, a full dresser and you got pipes hanging down, you don't want to bottom out the chassis and rip your pipes off. So that helps cheat the angle of attack right there. Now flipping around the other direction from the uh, primary entry door versus the uh, <laughs> Dr. Jellyfinger colonoscopy entrance that we originally started with right here. What are we looking at? Well, um, I like the color palette personally. Like, it's darker cabinets, but lighter everything else, the contrast. It doesn't read super small and closed. Being wide body and seven foot tall really, really helps. Now, these are all 50 amp service. Uh, the, the main air conditioner standard, the bedroom second air conditioner that we're going to be looking at. That's the only available option on these. What is kind of surprising is it is a full second centralized air. It's not just a direct dump drop-in or anything like that. And if you notice, there are, what am I counting, about 9, 10, 11, 12-ish uh, recessed D-ring tie-downs coming all the way up to the kitchen wall right here. And again, they have loaded a, uh, a big four-seater side-by-side -side in this, and a big old giant Paul Bunyan of a man was able to get himself out of the thing and, uh, you know, out of the RV. So I, I would say it's pretty side-by-side -side friendly, but you got to keep in mind, 
there's a million zillion different uh, potential measurements in here. Um, there's no way, like, if you drop me a comment, hey, can my whatchamacallit fit in this thing? Um, uh, you know, first of all, I'm not physically able to go out and measure one of these every single day because they're not at my home store. But secondly, um, I don't know necessarily the measurements of your whatchamacallit. So get the measurements of your thing, call our team, and we're happy to assist. Now, again, being a member of the Transcend family, I kind of expected a little more what I see from most stick and tin toy hauler builders and like a lot of scaled back. And I don't see a lot of scaled back. Like you've got the same kind of sofa seating arrangement here that you'd have in like a, a, a big momentum, like some really nice touches. Now, TV setups in these no slide haulers is always a bit of a trick, but frankly, I think they did about as good as they could right there. If you choose to add a TV to this and mount it on some kind of swing arm, um, you know, you could maybe be able to watch some TV from the rear patio if you want to put some lounge chairs back there. You could certainly use the uh, the, the bench over here on the uh, campsite of the RV to kind of be a, a primary seating position. Not to mention the fact that you've just got some wide open action space going on here over, or well, under rather, that picture window. Now, a lot of brands will tend to put an overhead cabinet right there, and I like storage, but I do wonder if it wasn't smart not including that, considering it is a toy hauler and loading stuff is kind of a, a primary concern in here. Now, right above the entry door and back here, you'll see two small power vent fans begging for an upgrade, obviously. But the fact is, at least they went ahead and ran wiring to those for us. And there's nothing that says they're not going to work just fine in their current form and uh, iteration right there. Now, what's also really nice is just with a no slide toy hauler like this even if you're not really hauling toys it's really nice to be able to extend your living space and slide right out here now we are uh, obviously not on a campsite we are actually in a new facility grand design is building right now it's not yet up and operational but they were kind enough to pull some units in here for us today to do some recording so it worked out pretty nice oh cool it's got the little uh puppy saver you see those extra little nets right there if you've got a little toddler bobbling around or a dog or something like that it can help make sure they don't accidentally you know slip between the uh the frame of the uh, toy hauler entry door and the actual grant patio gate itself and uh they don't take a tumble as it were as they might say across the pond uh, our cousins over there around the united kingdom um these uh benches back here they uh can roll down into a, a sleeper format they can also fold up flat against the wall for maximum wide open loading space i think that's pretty standard fare what i do like about them is that you d they don't have like free floating removable cushions that you have to like juggle or throw or store which means the cushions don't slide around so they are definitely spending more money on the seating on one of these well by extension if you choose to buy one of these you are spending more money on the seating and that's really the thing it's not the money the manufacturers spend it's the money you spend that we're really looking at right here now uh there's two of these under the awning but uh also back here in the rear ramp patio you've got like a flood loading light but at night if you're sitting out here you know in your chairs you got the roll screen door down off the back side of the uh, rv that we haven't seen yet you'll see that in a minute um this would be an awesome little space where you can still kind of see what you're doing just kind of keep the fun keep the party going uh, a little bit um, over here, once again, you've got that, uh, you know, big campsite window coverage, actually some pretty decent campsite window coverage. I'll try to take a better look at that in a few minutes here. But one of the cool things is this RV includes a floating table, but it has multiple height adjustments. But it's, uh, as a one man show, this table is a lot easier to set up if there's two of you that much, I will say. But so as a one man show, what I did here is I pulled it all the way up to show you that it can actually be countertop height, but you can drop it down for dining height. You can drop it down for like picnic height. You can drop it down to coffee table height, depending on what you want to do with it. Like if you want it laying down almost flat, uh, you know, between a couple of your favorite lounge chairs outside or something like that. So it's a very flexible, multifunctional thing. And because it has four solid foot pegs on the ground, it stays pretty steady, assuming it's on level ground. What do you think about the microwave location, by the way? I like it. Um, high mounted microwaves always kind of spook me because, you know, if you spill a hot bowl of soup down yourself because you accidentally tilt the bowl to you because the microwave's up too high, well, that's going to be a great way to get some third-degree burns and, uh, you know, go see the doctor. Well, uh, uh, a, a, a microwave mounted below the countertop level, some people don't like bending over trying to get to it. So I feel like this kind of splits the difference a little bit. Kind of like it. Something else I like, it's funny, it's the smallest things that make me excited. 
I love the fact they didn't waste anything. Look at this little drawer under the uh, the refrigerator. They they really maximized their full use and function. Similarly, the overhead cabinetry over here, that has an extra shelf in it. So the RV is seven foot tall, and they basically gave you double the overhead kitchen shelving of most brands as a result. Not to mention no traditional oven, nor is there an option for one. That might be a deal breaker. I hope you appreciate that I'm, I'm willing to, to point out and share little details like that. But the fact is, they gave us absolutely maximum storage on this. And I don't know that max storage is ever the wrong answer. Can you think of a couple creative ways to work around a no oven situation? This and maybe, you know, share with the class in the comment section. I'd be curious to know and learn. And I want to give you a, uh, a demonstration of the bed system on this. It is not your traditional Happy Jack power bed lift system. It is actually a gas strutted manual up down bed. But frankly... I'm a fan of it. It sets up quick and easy. It sets up a lot easier and faster, rather, than those uh, Happy Jack bed lift systems do. So when you're ready to convert from cargo mode to sleep mode, it is much easier. And because the floor benches fold up against the wall for, uh, you know, total travel cargo mode, it means you have maximum loading height in this since you don't have two tiers of overhead bed, basically. Now, in case you hadn't noticed, with that seven-foot ceiling, they had room to put that uh, lift-up bed oh, really close to the ceiling and still give you room to load and walk under this. And that, to me, is one of the key areas, the thing that this does that the more crossover style uh, travel trailer toy haulers don't do. The ones that are normally eight foot wide and six and a half foot tall, they're not big enough, they're not tall enough. Um, you theoretically could put a happy jack bed in them, but if you did, you would be bashing your forehead against it every time you tried to walk through there. Well, now you don't have that problem. You get to have your cake and eat it too, though the RV has to be a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, and a little bit more expensive to uh, do that. Now, while we're talking about a little bit uh, bigger, heavier, whatever, Let's talk about towing. Um, this has like an 11,000 pound gross vehicle weight. Uh, I know that a lot of that is only available cargo space. And a lot of people look at the driveway and go, I could handle that. You are supposed to be able to handle the full maximum gross vehicle weight of an RV. As a result, I don't know that this is going to be a stellar fit for a lot of half tons. Ooh, did you notice that motion light right by the way? Uh, by the entry door there. Now, if you're in flatland, boring southern Michigan where I'm at, where there's very little in the way of uh, elevation change or nasty winds, a heavy, heavy half ton could handle this. Uh, uh, double check your hitch weight. Don't just go hitching up to every single half ton. Keep that in mind. Basically, what I'm getting at to, to kind of boil this down a little more simply, I'm going to recommend a three quarter ton truck for this. Um, that's just my generalized uh, recommendation there. Now, the toilet space was fan frickety tastic uh and it is fairly fluffy friendly there's six f's going on right there rapid fire in case you were keeping count you got one of those little retractable kind of shower curtain door wall things and with this having a seven foot ceiling uh folks there is no question you have some absolutely fantastic headroom up in that area right there and that is i believe a 30 by 36 inch uh rectangular shower so you'll have some nice clearance there now we already mentioned they're not using the big giant xl vent fans here in the bathroom now uh something like that could certainly be applied so kind of keep that in mind a little bit of lipitorage storage galore going on with the medicine cabinet right there and then we have some good counter space i like that dedicated counter space but below the sink take a look at this you have a dedicated little wastebasket space but beside that shelving and a drawer what we are looking at right here i personally feel is one of the best bathroom cabinet arrangements give me a place for a little wastebasket give me a, a couple slots for like some uh you know towels and whatnot and give me a drawer for my stuff and it works now this bed's about to look small because the RV's wide body. It's a 60 by 80 true queen bed. They give you some serious room to be able to walk around that sucker. What's well, the thing here? The mattress itself is a bit of a backbreaker death wafer. Um, you know, it is what it is. But it's a true queen size and it's all fitted that way. So if you want to swap that mattress out with something that's a little more fitting your preferences, very easy to do. And some people like the mattress that comes with it. Everybody's a little different that way. That's why manufacturers can never find the mattress that everybody likes, you know. Uh, again, second air conditioner here is the only option on this. And I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I think I, I said earlier that this was centralized. I must have just looked at it and just gone off, I, I don't know, mental information. Because if you notice, it actually does have the control knobs right there. So that's not 
tied to the thermostat that is actually a, a direct dump error. Sorry about that. Sorry I got that wrong. I, uh, you know, can let you know that I'm human and I make mistakes at times. I'd, I'd rather kind of let, you know, own up to it rather. I'm not going to try to, whatever, I'm not going to try to lie to you. That's what I'm getting at. With this being so tall, if you sit up in bed, you ain't going to knock your noggin on that overhead cabinet, which is kind of nice. Now, it doesn't have any sort of enclosure. That is something that I would like. But, eh, you know, again, little details I can kind of work around. Giving you a look through the bedroom storage here, you see you've got your dual hanging wardrobe towers, individual dresser drawers on each side, footlocker storage under the bed, and across from the bed, uh, basically double the storage that you're already looking at around the bed with a couple more dresser drawers, more hanging storage, uh, and... One of my favorite things here, these like, I call them headboard power pockets. Uh, you know, household and USB outlets right up by the headboard in that kind of recessed, tucked away cavity. And what's interesting is if you notice, the mattress itself basically creates a little corral bucket. So loose little objects that you might happen to leave up there don't go jostling around and getting lost in transit. It's uh, kind of a smart way to go. I really, really like that when manufacturers do that. Now, I like to show RVs in road mode, and normally that means closing slides. But I think what it means here is taking a look at everything out of the way for like max loading space. Not that I don't think visually you couldn't have imagined something like this, but just to kind of get everything out of the way, really show you how much space uh, is here. And I don't know if you're really able to see it on screen, but I do have that uh, screen wall drop down right now just to kind of give you a little bit better look at that, although by definition you're supposed to see through it. So <laughs> I don't know. Was this helpful or not? Now, it took me a minute. When I first looked at this, that all-white exterior skin, first of all, one of the things I thought about that is, man, that's going to be nice for helping keep some of the sunshine out and keep this thing comfortable. But also, the uh, the radiant barrier layering that they have going through it, like all the way through the roof line, that will help a great deal. But it wasn't until I, I stood dead nose on with it like this that it kind of occurred to me, this is a wide-body camper. Uh, being a member of the Extended Transcend family, basically managed by the same people, I sort of just expected it would have an eight foot body. Like when you look at a lot of the crossovers from like J Flight and Gray Wolf, uh, you know, uh, Salem Wildwood FSX division, um, you, you run into a lot of real similar things. And I, I respect that they just didn't want to copy and paste and just slap their name on it. It's certainly within the same concept, but I mean, there's only so many ways you can do something to make it functional. I think they brought some decent originality to it. And I think the wide body nature of this definitely helps. Now let's talk about the exterior skin. It doesn't look like conventional corrugated tin skin. It's not corrugated to the same aggressive degree. That actually means that um, it could wobble more easily. So to kind of offset that, what they do on these is they use a thicker skin. Your sidewalls, instead of a 0.024 inch aluminum, are a 0.030, and your nose is a 0.040. And I know that those numbers don't, maybe they don't mean much to you, but basically they're using like heavier suit of armor all around this uh, white knight right here, as it were. Actually, the white knight series, uh, that the way that I'm looking at this, that has a pretty decent name to it. Look at the campsite window coverage. I just tuned into that. There's, I mean, bedroom, hallway, entry door, kitchen, lounge. There's just, there's five nice windows overlooking the door side of the sucker. And your power awning coverage here is, uh, the entry door is right in the middle of it. Well, not dead in the middle, but you get the idea. It's not right on the edge. So if it's a rainy day, you're not getting dribbled in the face. Um, uh, not something I think most people tend to enjoy. You know, uh, it's kind of nice being under your awning coverage. Now, you see the little white piece of paper hanging down? That is telling us that right on the edge of the awning, we do have ourselves a propane cooker hooker in case you want to do some grilling and chilling out here. And being right on the edge of the uh, awning arm means if you want to, uh, you know, be under the awning when it's raining, you can. If you don't want to be under the awning because you're smoking something up, well, you don't have to do that either. The industry continues to mount outside speakers all the way up to the roof line. I continue to not be a fan of it, and I've beaten that horse to death enough in enough videos that I'm just going to keep on rolling, baby. Uh, like, uh, well, Fred Dirks from Limp Bizkit, if anybody knows what I'm laying down right there. Oh, anyway, remember, man, there was a while that band like was mtv and now they're almost like a parody of themselves isn't that weird how that happens uh anyway uh the underbelly is enclosed heated radiant barrier and you see you do have a dedicated sewer hose caddy but up front we do have a full pass-through it's actually interestingly 
something the 22 MAV does not have that the 27 does. This 22 MAV has normal front pass-through storage. The 22 that's actually in front of this is shrunken down enough that it just didn't have the space to do it. So that's kind of a cool thing. Now the ramp on these, they're using the same, they call it all weather ramp that they use on Big Mo Momentum. And they do have that pull down retractable screen door. The thing people are going to ask, and if this is proactively answering a question you were going to ask, drop me a little like on the video or leave me a note that says, hey, thanks for letting me know about that garage door or whatever. People are going to want to know, ooh, can I get the same big three seasons door on this that I can get on Big Momentum? And the answer is you cannot. Because the uh, the garage door entry door sizes are not exactly the same, uh, the supplier who makes those three seasons doors doesn't make the size that fits this. Now, Grand Design has asked them to do that, but currently they haven't done that. So um, again, if that was useful information, maybe just drop me a little like on the video here. I'd appreciate that. I do like how they have the uh, the side ladder basically always on here. It is kind of an elliptical up-down fold on one of these, but it also means that you don't have another loose object to try to haul around and store in your RV. Now, clambering up that thing here with my fat backside, giving you a look around the roof, they have the same roof attic ducting here that they have on uh, the, the rest of their series. And again, you've got the radiant barrier layering going through the roof. Now the 27 MAB is 50 amp service standard, uh, optional second AC. That is literally the only option available on this camper. Every single other thing you see is exactly how it comes at the time of this filming. It is all cookie cutter. There, there are no swaptions or anything like that. Um, the 22 MAV, the little brother, it is always 30 amp service, does not have a 50 amp uh, capacity upgrade, does not have a second air option. So if you are in crazy hot sun country, maybe the big brother is going to give you the extra air that you're looking for. Um, the uh, uh, sewer outlets are all in one handy dandy location. The uh, uh, furnace, I almost said stove, then I almost said oven, but no, the, the other propane thing, the furnace, is exterior mounted for service purposes. The water heater is still a, uh, a gas electric um, uh, six gallon tank variety. And I've heard from folks who have uh, some experience boondock dry camping, that those are going to be a little bit better for boondocking. I, I don't have personal experience either way, so I don't really know, I'm relying on that. If anybody could elaborate on that, I'd really like, why do you feel that way, I'd appreciate it. Uh, big full pass through up front, although you do still have your little docking center over here. And above that, you have your 25 amp charge controller for the 165 watt solar panel that we saw earlier. And just to give you a size reference, I took the ladder to get to that upper bunk and just kind of chucked it in here real quick, just to show you that you can put a whole lot of stuff under there and stuff being a technical term. So let me know what you think of it. Again, this is a newer entry. They've been out for uh, less than a year now. We're approaching one year. It took me a while to finally get some footage of these. And thanks to Grand Design for setting us up in one of their shops today where we could get this footage today. Leave them a little note. Now, speaking of notes, drop me some notes. Let me know what you like and dislike about this one. And while you're doing that, also take a look in the video description where I'll leave you some links to see where we have any of these in stock. Um, some other kind of similar sort of layouts out there as well as uh, checking our website to see, did I already say have some in stock? I think I did. But what you won't be able to find there is a discounted sale price. Now we don't sell for MSRP. We're just not allowed to advertise these for anything less than full blown MSRP. We don't do hidden dealer fees. If you contact our team, <laughs> we are definitely gonna save you a nice, nice chunk off that full retail price. So give our team a call, whether you're curious or serious, we're happy to get you some figures. And until next time, Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.